Peace, bro. This is your brother Mikey Fever of NYP, along my co-host for today, <laughs> Ron Brown, LMT, the People's <laughs> Fitness Professional. Yeah, we are. It's Friday. <laughs> Yo, you always mess up on Fridays, man. What's yeah, going I'm on? Done. I'm done. <laughs> hey, it's, it's Friday. <laughs> we have a special doctor, Dyer, in the building. Of the what's going on? How you brother? doing? Peace and love, brother. Mike, hey, um, the sound effects, Mike. Mike, sound effects are not here right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, you, know, you know what, Ron? Ron's always messing with me, man. Right, hey, That's okay. Hey, it's okay. Hey, you know what? We can actually have what you call sit down, sip Friday if we wanted to. Yeah, that's exactly. A that's a fact. We were gonna do so, something like that anyway. Yeah, absolutely. We can if, if we could all get ourselves, you know, in, in our own little spaces and get our own little sit thing going, and just and just chop it up and chop it up live. I think that would be a great live show for people to um, chime in while they're sipping their thing and while we're doing our thing and, and having that conversation. Because you know, one of the things that you know we do here that you guys are just really promoting is that it's not just the education of a black man. Or the education of a black community, it's the conversation of a black community. Exactly. And I think that's completely different. We have those, we have those things in barbershops, we have those things in, in beauty salons, we have those things in, in bus depots, because I have them everywhere. So, but we what we don't have is real dialogue, right? We we see it sometimes on the sports shows, and I know a couple of other people have done it that way where they have that little chop up thing and they're sitting around the mic and they're and they're, and they're having a little sip going on but they're really yeah. talking about real stuff but what they don't talk about is the science of stuff mm. they talk about the platitudes of stuff which is great they talk about the how what we think we can be which is awesome they talk about where we have been that's great they talk about where we could go i think that's amazing and all those things are needed. But what we don't get is the science. We get um, memes, platitudes, and sayings. That's what we get. And something you can put on a shirt, I am nothing I've ever said. I don't think you can ever put on a shirt. Because if it's only able to be put on the shirt, then you're able to be, be manipulated by the shirt. And not by the truth. Change the if, culture, it, right? If, if if I can get you hyped on something like a logo, and you don't understand what the symbols mean, then I got you. I can control you. If I can get you on something of man, Doctor P, he's he's always speaking truth, but you don't do the research and the science. You don't do the. You don't do the learning of yourself then you're following my words and i can get you to drink the juice where you can end up dead in that room i am not trying to get you to drink the juice i'm selling i am not trying to get you to take any of the um medicines i'm not selling you anything Maybe that's always been a problem for me. Maybe that's why, I, I don't know. I was going to say I don't have the big house on the hills because I don't want to sell you anything. I want you to learn something so you can produce, so you understand who you are and where you can go, not from what I can tell you and how I can hype you up and get you ready for the big game. The big game has been played. <laughs> we have lost. <laughs> we have been killed. And the game is still being played. And we're, we're still trying to say, put me in coach. Because we keep saying, understand the game. Otherwise, you won't understand what the type of player you are. Well, all that is really, really true. But do you understand the science of the game? Because if you don't understand the science of the game, I can shift the game. 
because that can shift the underneath movement of it, and then you have to relearn the game. If you learn the science, there is no new game. It's just moving different pieces. So if you want to put up this brother that we were going to have on here, Fahim. Sure, sure. Let me see. Um, we were going to, we were going to have a, a good brother of mine I have just known for years. And um, the, the, can you share it again? Yeah, yeah. I thought. Um, yes. Is did it say stop sharing? Yeah. Uh, let's is see. It there? Right there. It's it's in the back room, so you should bring it. Yeah. Let me see. I got you right there. Hold on. Um, but anyway, Fahim, he is getting a, he was gonna come on the show tonight. And he was going we were gonna talk about the health of the healer, right? And he is getting, if you can see this, he is getting an award tonight. He's actually at a radio station, um, TV station tonight, and he would love to have been on. But the guy is such a prolific writer about African education, American education. I mean, the guy has traveled around the world. The guy has been there, done that, and got the T-shirt. And he has studied, studied, studied. And what we were going to talk about, you could take this off now. And what we were going to talk about together is the health of a healer. Because mm. he and I have gone through and are still going through health issues. So we always talk about how to heal ourselves, how to be ourselves, and what can we do. But even healers, even people of the science of myself, can go through health issues and still uh, and still move forward in the things we have to recognize that we don't often recognize, even when we're teaching. Gotcha. So even for myself, knowing what I have been through, knowing what I can do, knowing what I understand, I still need that conversation. I still need that brother to say, are you okay? There is no one that stands on the mountain by themselves. And, and we were going to talk about that. And I, I'm not going to tell his story, but I'll tell my story. So I have, um, I have recorded to have a stroke just about several months ago. Wow. Um, so with that, there's neurological symptoms that's that's happening that I'm going through. But even knowing the science and understanding natural health and natural healing, understanding that I am losing bone marrow every day slowly. I don't have leukemia, but I am losing bone marrow. So my bones are getting weaker. And so there is there is a sense of where's my life headed to process of thought, right? Because when we think about what your body has is doing or what it's going through, we often think about, I'm not going to live this long anymore. I don't think that way. And we were going to talk about that. So I'm going to talk about that. And one of the things I'm going to now share again, so back to the, the science, is this... We're going to, um, I have it up there, Mikey, if you want to put it in the, let's see, um, stop nope. sharing that. And I'm going to share this here. There you go. Can everybody see that? There you go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So what I want to talk about here is first, we know that um, we have recently, not recently, but scientists have always said that um, this is endorphins. Okay, if people can read, and I don't want to assume that people cannot read, but this is endorphins. So, it, with this, uh, with this being said, can it, people see my my hand across the thing, or should I highlight yeah. it? I see it. Let me see if I can. Okay, with this blue line here, right? If you can see it, this blue line here, it is the mesocortical pathway. The reason why this is so important is because endorphins are released through the process of this big pathway that's that blue pathway right there. That blue pathway is so important. Let me see if I can... I like my pen. Anyway, that blue pathway is so important. 
you can see what we talked about the hypothymus, we could talk about the thymus and all that stuff. But what I want to talk about here specifically is this pathway, because this pathway is what produces a protein that comes out through tears, crying, expression. All tears are not the same. Tears are often produced by an oxytocin that comes out in painful tears. And I, I will do that again, painful tears. It, can t it, it contains a stress hormone that's enacted in your tears. Not all tears are the same. And in this uh, metacortical pathway, right, is where pain triggers in the brain right here. And you can see how this comes down in here into that pleasure center there, the hypothalamus we talked about last time, right? And you can see that spinal cord and how it triggers this right in here. But anyway, those tears that releases these types of endorphins, not just happy tears, not just I feel boo-hoo. We're talking about internal pain. We're not talking about external perception. External perception can create internal pain. External perception can create internal pain that the brain produces a chemical that causes you to cry. That crying is a healing cry. I was in the service of special operators and, and different martial artists and, 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 and things I've gone through in my martial arts training that produces a type of tear. It produces a type of, I don't know if I can do this anymore. It is not a failure tear. It is not a, I give up tear. It is a internal tear that is, that is drudging up all the pain that has stopped you from becoming the person, the human, the life, the light that you can always been, these tears produces a certain type of protein. This protein comes out in oxytocin. Does that make sense? These tears produces a protein that comes out in oxytocin, which is it comes out through your endorphins. This, am I, I making it. sense? No, you're making sense. I'm understanding the, the external environment produces, like, it, it causes a, a, what could I say, like a chemical reaction in your body? It changes. And are you saying that the, the endorphins come from the cortical, cortical pathway? Correct. Okay. So I was, referring, I was referring to the painful tears, as you said it, from the external concept. But it's not just pain because I feel like I didn't get the lottery ticket I want to get. Mm -hmm. The pain, the, the brain knows the difference between what you call false pain and true pain. And true pain comes out in hard training. Now, I want to ask, uh, for those who don't know, endorphins are, if, if uh, you could explain for the layman, endorphins are what and what 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 does it do to what kind of reaction does a body have from endorphins so there's different types of endorphins right you you know you have your melatonin uh, melatonin and oxytocin and um and it and it helps you feel good let's just go with that it can help you f it it's it's the it's it is the chemical it is endorphins are the chemicals that allows you to feel. That's it. Whatever you're feeling, they have specific endorphins that causes it. Gotcha. Basically like a runner's high. Correct. That's an endorphin. Yeah. Or um or, or a sexual high, that's an endorphin. Or you are a crack addict or heroin addict, that produces an endorphin. Or you like success because you like standing on the podium, it produces an endorphin. 
those right. you get endorphins when you sleep. Endorphins are all triggered by what you are doing and how it processes in the mind to the brain and produces the chemical. The chemical are the endorphins. Gotcha. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. That makes sense. Okay. Okay, good. So with that being said, is so endorphins are those chemicals. Those chemicals are broken down. As they broke down, as they break down, and in, in, in this picture here, as you see that, as it breaks down, when it releases through this avenue, crying because of pain produces a different type of protein that helps the body heal. Because it releases a negative protein out the body. It's like a urinary tract infection. If you have a urinary tract infection or you have an infection and you're trying to urinate, you got a or a flu, you can piss that out. The body is getting rid of that toxin. Crying produces the chemical that allows the toxin to release from the body. I got you. I get. I get. I get what you're saying. The, it's important to go through the motions, not become voided of emotion, desynthesized. The body has to, you know, in order to heal it, you got to reveal it. You got to let it out, release it. But yeah, so so that's the that that's one of those platitudes, those t-shirts things, right? We gotta we gotta release it to heal it, but we don't mm -hmm. know why that really what does that mean, right? We yeah. we know that we know now, you know, people say you know it takes for you to be vulnerable for you to be strong. Great, yes, it's a great t-shirt for it. But we the science is it produces healing because of the protein through the tears because of the endorphins. Mm. So understand the science exactly. Got you. Makes sense. That's important. So I have heard my mother have told me in the past, like she used to always tell me, quit with the anger. Because she always said, you're releasing chemicals in your body that can create high cholesterol, high blood pressure when you get angry all the time. You hold things in. She said, you don't know what you do to your body. You release, you know, certain chemicals that to, to relax your muscles, to allow your muscles to be to have agility, like that fight or flight response. Mm -hmm. And then she said that could lead to issues later down the line with your heart and everything else. And, and, and she, she's right. And we talked about that last week through the spinal and how it releases and how it touch on other things. And people can go back to the last show and really mm -hmm. start to connect the two. But when we talk about this is one of the things that, you know, I was going through um, different types of training. I I'll never forget we were going through this night out and this is tr this is training we were going through this night out and this is probably the best of the best of the military and that could all offer and we 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 have we call we have the way with all we have the mental toughness and we have all those things the one thing i will never forget is that we were put through this particular exercise that we all broke down and it was only then we found our strength. Because it wasn't that we thought we were failures. It was because we released so much pain of ego that we were able to find our true being of getting through something. So when we talk about uh, special operators that we're quitters, yeah, we quit all that bull crap that holds people back. That's what we quit. We quit all that. You could be strong. You're the man. You you can do anything and everything. You can climb any mountain. You can swim anything. That's the stuff we we quit. Because that stuff is all lies. What we quit is the perception of thinking that you can never not be able to do. 
You have to know your limits and push past it and know that limit. Understanding a limit doesn't mean you're a quitter. It, it means you know who you are. And it let and, and allows you to let your teammates, your team members, to know exactly what you're capable of at that time. Because if they're going to depend on you and they know your limitations, they can only depend on you to a certain point. And that's okay. So when we have women telling men, why can't you hold it down? Why can't you be more of this? Maybe they haven't checked their limitations. Maybe they don't know who they are in their own limitations. Maybe they haven't cried enough to understand that they need to release all this poison so they can get to their higher self. Mm. <laughs> They're crossing into waters right now. You know, in this day and age, they're, they're, they're going to say something. He's chauvinistic. That's that toxic masculinity he's, he's speaking from. In their interpretation, not all. Some of them who do have that. Right. You know, right. That alter perception that would say that. But what you said is true. It's true. It's true. All right. So now the poisons uh, that you speak of, you're saying the poisons are maybe past experiences and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now, now, are you are you, call, are you calling are you calling the past experiences or a trauma, if you will? No, no you're not calling it trauma. I'm not calling it poison. Okay. It's only poison when you don't know what caused it. Can you break that down further? Can you further? We talked about this last week, and, and I like repeating myself because I think people need to listen to the other shows. Mm -hmm. If you don't know who's coming into your mental club, your, your emotional house and causing your disturbance, then you will continue to let them in and you're wondering why your house, your mental house is all jacked up. Mm. I know talking to my father, and I'm not talking about my father specifically, I know talking to my father makes me sick, he degrades me, he always puts me down, he's this, he's that, he's the other thing. He's this, that, and the third. So every time you talk to him, you expect something differently, but he gives you the same. So your poison comes from your expectations. So basically you set yourself up, you set yourself up for disappointment, expecting. You yeah, know. but I, I love my dad. I, I respect my dad. I grew up, I want to, you know, talk to my dad and, you know, I really want to help my dad. And, and my dad is going through a tough time and I know he's going through a tough time and I want to be there for him. Mm -hmm. But he is poison for your interpretation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying do not talk to your dad. But if you expect something different out of your dad, then that's the poison you keep allowing into your body and your life. Mm -hmm. If you know the woman that you're in love with is sleeping with other Joes, and it bothers you, and you're still with her, that's your choice. But don't let it bother you. Paul is Dr. Paul is telling people, stop. As they say, you pick your poison. You choose to you choose to live with it. So it it, it goes down to like and what happens in this world in relationships where people go get into relationships not trusting their partner, but they continue to stay and continue to put themselves through that that torture. Of mental anguish, not trusting and going through the anxiety. But, but Mikey Fever, they're putting themselves through to things we've talked about before. I don't think they know what they're doing, so they don't have a choice. They're being mm -hmm. they're they're hypnotized mm -hmm. by the trauma. Yeah. If you know this is causing you sickness, and you know why you're doing this now it's your choice we've gotten past you doing dumb shit because you don't know that you don't know what you're doing 
Exactly. We've moved past that conversation. We're getting into the conversation of if you know what you're doing and you know what you're allowing, then you know what the chemicals you're going to produce. And these endorphins here are being released in your body, which creates a poison that if you cry, it's part of healing. But if you keep going back to the same poison, the poison never gets released. You're So I'm just trying to help you out saying that you can cry, you can be affectionate, you can allow these endorphins to come through your body, down your brain, into your spinal cord, through your chemistry, through your body, through your organs. But when you cry, you release the healing properties of the proteins. But if you go back, that's a whole other issue. I'm just telling you what the chemistry's doing. Yeah, got you. Exactly. Yep. Check. That's a check. <laughs> so if you want to take this off and, and people, we can go back to their different time. Uh, got you. All right, let's go. I'll never forget the first time I was in biochem class and I watched an experiment of what cells did. And I asked myself, how do cells perform something that they know nothing about? And that was eons ago. Cells have a brain. Cells have a memory. Cells have their own life force. As yes, above, as below, down, all the way to... That's why I got into cellular biology. Because it is not just the space, this hair, the, everything else. Our cells have its own face, hair, and beautiful hats and clothing that they wear. Exactly. They are living their own New York City life. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They are... They are. They go down to their corner store. The cells go down to their corner neurons and their atoms and their atomic structures, and they're hanging out <laughs> and they're listening beings. to each other, huh? Yeah. Intelligent beings is a world, world within worlds, right? And they're listening, and they and they and they hear music. They hear vibration. They're like, "What are you listening to?" You know, like, and the guy goes, "And then one of the cells, man, you got to check this out." And it's this, it's the sound of sickness. Woe is me. I feel this way. I can never do. I'll never get out of here. And yeah. and and you hear another and another cell goes, man, I like what that's ripping. Let me tune in. So you got a bunch of cells like you have humans listening to the same garbage that's saying that's talking about nothing but junk, right? And you're like. Why are you listening to that? And they're like, man, have you listened to this beat? And have you say, have you listened to the words? <laughs> mm. Right? Have you listened to the words? Cells do the same thing. You have healthy cells and you have cells that just get sick because they connect to those other sick vibrations of the same thought patterns, which produces the chemistry that causes you to feel the way you've been feeling. That's right. That's right. Okay, so back to the, the uh, cortical pathway. I think that's what the, how you pronounce it. Yeah. Do you want uh, to bring it back up or no? You're good. I want to bring it back up because, you know, okay. I, I want to go through that so that people understand that through the cortical pathway, that's where tears come from is what you're saying? Yes. So, yes. Can you can you bring that up? Is it there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So through the cortical pathway is where the proteins is produced. Be careful of the tears. Tears are the outcome of what comes out of the, 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 the ducts, right? Mm -hmm. But the protein that's produced that what the tears come from comes through this cortical pathway. Okay. Okay. Now it's, uh, it seems like there's like a line and now mm. at the bottom of it, uh, there are those are the ducks. These, yes, these blue things here, mm -hmm. these dark blue things here, those are the ducks. And so, so this was 
this is in our brain for a reason right for us to deal with stress and pain correct right in a healthy way in a healthy way in a healthy way so that so you holding back tears is actually a detriment to yourself correct yeah correct Mm, wow. So I have a question, Doctor Paul. What what happens <clears throat> if a person doesn't know how to release tears? I was getting ready to say the same thing yeah, before you answer. Before you answer that, I want to know. Okay, so growing up in the different worlds we become a part of, whether it be growing up in the inner city, martial arts, whatever, right? You're taught to hold back tears. You're taught to be a man, be strong, and handle it. Men don't cry. Yada. So when you hold back tears, what happens to the body? Yeah, I wanted to get. I wanted to get. Yeah, that's for real. So it starts to decay. It starts a decaying process faster. Even the oldest, um, when you talk about the, the martial scientists and the martial arts, the you know the oldest warriors that we know, the samurai and the, the, the different long-term people that we consider to be strong, even um, the Khans, and, um, um, Genghis Khan, he, he mandated all his warriors to cry, to suffer in pain. And yet, get back on the horse and still to ride because they released all. So they knew all that even then through, through the kind wow. of through the samurai years too. Because that's why many of the, the the samurai warriors were so into the arts, the arts of emotional arts, painting, drawing. Mm -hmm. They were expressive gardening. They they read. They wrote. They did things because that was part of their expression. Mm. Got you. But what happens if you can't? So you may not have seen them too. Will you see that pituitary down there? Mm. Yes, sir. Okay. That's where it gets bottled up and closed up and locked down. So if that pituitary gets locked down, which is the, the part that releases all hormones, then your body be becomes unable to release any toxins that is attacking that is attacking the body. Mm. So hence this is why you, you become ill and stuff like that, have immunity issues, um autoimmune issues, and everything Correct. else. All right, I got you. Cause the only reason why and this, I'm glad Ron asked that as well. I went through a phase in my life where I couldn't release no tears. I just started recently you know, had a moment when I had to. I'm being honest, but it took me years. I couldn't, like, even through my grandmother's death and other people, I could never break, you know, shed a tear. I thought something was wrong with me. I'm like, this is crazy. Your external, your external environment created your atmosphere. I was, I, I just, um, I had, I had a pleasure of meeting with a, a, uh, a person. I'm not gonna um, try to make. I don't want to make. I, I want to make this person vague because I don't want to put him out there. Mm -hmm. He's an affluent person. Mm. Very well known. I met him and he has said the same thing you said, Mikey Fever. And his mother, his father is sick. Was, is, has Still sick, but when I met him, it was in his later stages of his father being very sick. And and um, I, after talking with him, I expressed to him that because of your culture and what you believe that you are doing now in the Western world, that you could not help him in his world, even though you want to be a good son, you're actually a horrible son. Mm. And he's been fighting the difference between being 
in the Western world and making large amounts of cash and being at his bedside of where his dad needs him to be according to his culture next to him so throughout the many years he has said well i could i could fly back and forth i can fly him here i could do all these things but traditional culture in his 